everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm excited to be joined by my friend and business partner, Mr. Michael Vis- Vincent, Mr. Podcaster Extraordinaire. I'm sure you've seen him over the years. And we work together on fuel economy improvement, emissions reduction, and plastics waste reduction, recycling, all with monetary gains for companies and individuals. So it's a win-win scenario. It absolutely is. And that's that's and that's the name of the game, right? It is commercially viable, economically viable, sound business practices that you can follow that make you greener, but also save you money or make you money, right? Absolutely, right? That's the name of the game. And that's what we're doing. And it's fun and exciting. And man, we've got a lot of good things going on, honestly. So today we're going to be talking about how to get better fuel economy in a big rig truck. That's our big subject for today. Yeah. And you shared an article with me from HMD Trucking, which we're going to be talking about. And, uh, you know, it's all about tips and tricks for getting better fuel economy. But I'll give you one right off the bat. We're getting anywhere from 10% to 30% fuel economy improvement with cyber fuels. And the net savings on fuel is anywhere from 10 to 20% net savings, right? Net savings. Net savings. Net. Yes. So we're doing this all over the place. We've got study after study. So after all the costs of equipment or, 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 or and the product, et cetera, you're getting your, you're getting your you know, at what is it, average is 20%, right? So average fuel economy improvement is 20%. So after right. the cost of product on the low end, it's 10% net savings. There you go. Right? Yeah. So we've got them all the way up into the low 30s, 30%, 30.4. And That's that right. is going to get you 20% net savings on your fuel. Which is, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So you can do that or you can follow these tips, which are, we're going to talk about from HMD. And it, there's a great article because yep. they're right on every one of these points. Uh, and these are the easy ones to follow. But how easy is it to put a, a piece of small little piece of equipment on your that feeds into your 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 fuel tank that you know uh, net savings of almost twenty percent? Yep, yep. So take your fuel <laughs> number, whatever it is, and say if I could cut this by ten percent, what's that number look like? If I could cut it by twenty percent, what does that number look like? It's pretty awesome. So in my opinion, why not do these things that we're going to talk about and that. And that, and that. Oh, and by the way, it also it reduces emissions, does it not? Particulate matter, really, yeah. like twenty two percent or something. Twenty two percent proven in a lab. Particulate matter reduction at the combustion engine. So all those truck drivers out there that are tired of DPF issues and DEF sensor issues and DEF nozzles going out because they're spraying DEF all the time. So all those little things tied to the EGRs. Uh, we help with that, obviously, right? Less emissions off the engine means less death, less DPF filter issues, less maintenance, less repairs as well. That's important because it's not at the tailpipe. It's that's at right. the combustion. That Makes is it, right. Before It's you not worse. Get, that's better. <laughs> that's right. Before you ever get to that EGR part after combustion, we're taking care of it at the source. Exactly. Exactly. It's important that people who don't understand how that mechanics works, that that this isn't a, well, it's only at the combustion. No, it's, that's a better thing. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's much a better. better. Thing. Yes. It's it much, better. much better, much better. But anyway, HMD. So this is a great article that I sent you, right? So the first one is, and this is something that I was pounded into my head as a kid, cutting lawns, right? When I started cutting lawns for a living and like, so my parents would let me live there and, and eat food. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but also neighbor's lawns and stuff like that, right? So follow a maintenance schedule, right? I mean, you cut your lawn. Did you have yeah. to, I had to, you know, every year change the spark, drain the oil, sharpen the blades. all. And after every time I cut the grass, I cleaned out all the grass clippings that might be on the you know, undercarriage, Right. Right. I mean, right. it's simple. Follow the, the maintenance schedule. Take care of your stuff. Keep it clean. Keep it up to date. You're in great shape, right? I love, you know, the newer mowers, they have this nozzle where you can put the hose on and you can spray out the water underneath. On the deck. Yeah, on the deck. Put it on right the into the mower deck. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to flip the mower over and get your screwdriver out and 
get all the stuff off the bottom, which trust me, trust me, I've done that, obviously. Yeah, no, but if you're not doing that, are you really cleaning your engine? I mean, because <laughs> that's, yeah, you're exactly, that's how I always did it. You had to flip it up and scrape all that stuff off and do that. Of course, if you really had to scrape, then you probably hadn't cleaned it in a number of, oh, yeah. a number of cuts. Oh, right? <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it was more like once every three months or something. There you me. go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that absolutely that absolutely can happen but you know hey i still follow it to this day and my push mower is 10 years old and I, i'm telling you i pull it like that fast and it turns boom yep. if you do the maintenance like you're supposed to do a major league difference like you said change the oil change the spark plugs make sure it's clean um sharp blades obviously on a mower um yeah, yeah obviously makes, you're not going to find almost none of those Massive difference massive difference <laughs> You find almost none of those on a class eight truck though. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No, the but you know, is... <laughs> changing your oil, obviously on a recommended cycle, changing yes. your spark plugs, doing the routine yes. preventative maintenance makes a major league difference. Well, even, you know, the sensors, dude, holy mackerel, keeping that stuff up to date and keeping it. Cause you know, you blow a sensor and you're, that's what's ridiculous and drives you crazy sometimes. You got to you got to make sure those are up to date and everything is working properly. The other one is is just, you know, your tires, man. I mean, when you start getting into just mechanical stuff, as simple as a few pounds of tire pressure can kill your miles per gallon, right? That's right. Absolutely. Yep, that's another big one. Tire pressure makes a big difference on fuel economy. No doubt. You know any more in the in my uh, truck anyway, there's this little thing that goes off. Boop, when if if the tire pressure is below a certain amount, right? Okay. And I'm like, and I'm like, thank you. Now my wife's car, she's got a fancier car. Hers, you can just flip over a little screen and see what the tire pressure is any point in time, right? My my truck doesn't have that. Yeah. Yeah. So, now mine in each tire. Yeah. Each yeah. tire, what the yeah. pressure is. Yeah. The and annoying part is that in the wintertime here, it, when, by the time I get down the end of the street after leaving my garage, my 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 tire pressure will drop by like three or four pounds because of the cold. <laughs> yep, that is tricky, right? You know what? I've, I've, uh, nitrogen. Have you heard about nitrogen in tires? Oh, sure. Absolutely. So uh, it just doesn't expand and contract, I guess, nearly as much. So No, it doesn't. Again, with my wife, she's got a fancier car. She's got nitrogen in the tires. So, well, there you go. She doesn't have to worry about it. But I mean, a truck, you've got to worry about it because, you know, you got road gator season, right? The summer comes along and then all of a sudden you see the road gators all over the, all over the road. Tire pressure can make that happen, but it's the heat of the, of the pavement and the heat, especially when you're rolling 18 wheels down the road. You oh, need yeah. to make sure that you've adjusted that tire pressure from summer to winter and winter back to summer because too high is dangerous yes. <laughs> and too low can take a lot of money out of your pocket over, you know, a couple thousand miles a week. That's right. And I see there's some, there's some technologies that have come online around tire pressure, me measuring and monitoring, which are really interesting. So keep yeah, yeah, track I, of absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. You've got all these things where you're monitoring the, the other, cause the other thing is right. Is, monitoring the op and optimizing the rpms right which is really it's that's the way the driver drives right yep makes a huge difference yep yeah the drive and you got all this new technology now that shows you exactly what you're doing as a driver are you braking hard are you are you gassing it hard uh what is your shifting like if you've got one that still shifts which is becoming rare and rare but just how you drive and how fast uh, and how fast you accelerate is highly, I mean, that, that impacts your, your miles per gallon greatly. In fact, in my truck, it tells me what my average miles per gallon is all the time, right? I'm sure yours does too, right? Yes. And when you fill it up, it'll say, oh, your range is 383 miles or whatever it is. That's right. I got a speeding ticket about a year and a half ago riding with Dooner, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> From what the truck, when I was with him on what the truck. Right. And, uh, so I, I just decided I wasn't going to speed anymore. And I started making it a game, right? I set my 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 speed control, my cruise control, and it's got the adaptive, right? So it's got the radar and it'll slow down. So I know to pass people and stuff like that, right? So it's got all that on it, um, which is not like basic because all I have is like a Tacoma truck. There's absolutely nothing fancy on it at all. Um, but dude, I mean, just when I fill up my truck now, all of a sudden my range has gone up by about 25 miles. 
when I fill up my truck now. It used to be like 383. Now it's like 407 or something like that. Isn't that fun when you say that? You're like, oh, yeah, wait. I mean, it takes a long time to do that because I was driving for like a year and a half on it, just like a maniac. And it was at 383. So about a year later, I gained like back about 23 miles to a, a full gallon of tank which, or tank of tank of gas, right, which is pretty right. cool. And pretty also cool. it's got the on the newer trucks and cars. It's got the instantaneous where you're way yeah. up in the green zone if you're just cruising at 65. But if you put the hammer down from a stop sign. Well, it goes to zero. It's like, no, that's not good, right? You're absolutely right. And so I, I try and uh, what I try to do is from a stop sign or a red light is try to get to speed at what I feel is a comfortable pace for myself and for maybe people behind me. Right. And still keep my MPGs like above 15. Now I'm in a truck. So 15 is pretty good. <laughs> all yeah. Right. Yeah, um, exactly. Yep. But uh, yeah, so th there's all those games that you can teach yourself how to drive correctly <laughs> because you can do it. You don't have to go to zero miles per gallon driving uphill. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. I think idling is another big one, right? Reduce yeah, idling. Reducing idling is is huge, and and sometimes that's hard, right? Because you you're sitting there and it's minus five, and you're making a delivery in Toledo, Ohio, or something like that, or <laughs> you know, uh, International Falls, or something like that, and and you know you you're gonna have to do some of that stuff. But when you can reduce it, idling, when the engine's you know just sitting there idling, and your MPG falls to zero, that's bad. Right, right. Yep. When you're yes, sitting sir. somewhere and you're stopped. And your engine is still running. You're getting zero miles per gallon. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That Yeah, that's zero. And that zero means bad. And that's really leads us into the next part that they talk about really is the leveraging the technology, which you talked about and we talked about is seeing that instantaneous feedback and all that other kind of stuff. Use that. You can use that information back in, and fleet managers can use that to coach their drivers. I know, I know. Keep the freight moving, keep wheels moving, freight on truck. That's the goal. Empty miles, all the other kind of stuff. But listen, man, if you can save even a couple percents on a fleet's fuel economy, that's big money on the bottom line. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the, the cool thing in the recent years, um, fleet owners, fleet executives are doing yeah, yeah. incentives for drivers to drive more safely and drive more efficiently. And there's these systems now that help, right? But when you can incentivize it for the driver to drive more safely and more economically, then it's a win-win, right? You're not just pounding on the driver, just be more safe, drive better, you know? <laughs> you got some measures to use. <laughs> Absolutely. And we can get into management philosophy and how you can actually make those words not be just you know, jawing at your driver or, or empty sentiment. <laughs> you right, know, you right. need to be able to back it up too. You need to walk that walk, not just talk the talk. And then the next time yell at them for driving too slow, that's not <laughs> how it works. Right. <laughs> right it works. Exactly. No, that's yeah. not a good thing. Absolutely. <laughs> the but other one is, is route optimization do. software, right? Yeah. Fleet routing optimization and GPS. Honestly, also, um, you know, I had 14 years in fleet routing optimization and GPS with Appian Logistics Software, then TMW Systems, then Tremble, right? Well, there you go. But yeah, reducing road miles by 10 to 20% obviously has a major league uh, factor on your fuel that you're burning, no doubt. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's, there's, you know, when I think back over my career, how many thousands of miles I could have saved had I known that it was, you know, warehouse A instead of warehouse C when I got to the address. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you get to this address, you're like, what? I remember the first time I went to one of our terminals uh, at U.S. Express up in um, uh, up in uh, Markham, Illinois. Uh, I followed the GPS and got there, and it was the street behind it. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. It took me it took me like another five miles to get to the actual <laughs> terminal because of the way the roads were and everything. Oh, absolutely. you know how that works. Oh yeah, uh, no doubt. Crazy. I feel bad. For these truck drivers, um, there's only certain entrances you can go to the truck side of the fueling, right? Yeah. If yeah. you don't get that right, you might have to go another mile or mile and a half 
before you can get back around to that side of the building. I mean, a hundred percent, right. A hundred percent, right. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, I saw a route optimization study, you know, and it's not, it's not all just about the distance. It's about the slope as well. Now I know that you're driving a truck and stuff like that. And that's a, that's a difficult thing to bring into the concept, but I'm just saying it is out there with this optimization software. It needs to consider slope, especially in a city like, you know, Pittsburgh or something like that, where you're well, going up that. and down Honestly, mountains. I, so in California, you've got the mountain range right sure. outside of Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. We did this thing with the system that would draw a barrier. You can't get from this stop to that stop going that way. Now you can get there going around that way, but I see that going through the, and we did it in uh, Tennessee and, uh, other places as well. Colorado, there's certain areas you just don't want your truck going up a 30% grade. I mean, it's just not, not good. So it's not, not good at all for, for anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had this little trick. We drew a boundary. We had this in the thing in the background, it would take road network and put all the points from A to B, A to C, A to D, A to E, right? Yeah. It said, there was no way to go from here straight to there. You have to go either this way or up over that way, one something, because they just didn't want the drivers trying to pull up through those mountains that were those passes that were crazy grades, you know? So uh, we, we had a little way to, to make it happen. And uh, that was a big part of uh, what we were doing as well. So. Yeah, no, it makes total sense for safety reasons, for, you know, maintenance reasons, you know, hard stop or even runaway truck reasons coming down the other side. But mileage is a huge thing as well. You're obviously just revving the hell out of that engine, trying to get up those Hills. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's companies out in Colorado that have to use a cetane booster because it's heavy haul and it's trees and so forth. And there's just only so many ways you can go. So they have to use it, you know, for those big heavy loads to get up those yeah. Mountain Hills. Uh, yeah. Uh, you'd be really, and bad well, and, and, and real quick, th those heavy loads appear to be some of the absolute best fuel savings that we've been able to show on some of our on, on some of our tests, right? I mean, aren't those those heavier haul type of construction type of things there are the ones that are showing like 32%, right? Yeah, the one that we have that was averaged at 11 trucks with 30.39% fuel economy improvement yeah. was heavy haul building materials. Yeah. And of course, going to construction sites with heavy loads. That's the top one that we've got right now. I want to see who can beat it. Who can beat that? Maybe if you're hauling those windmill turbines that are 65 foot long or something, I don't know. We're, it's going to be interesting to see what the very. Yeah. So it kind of goes from st stuff like that to long haul type of thing. And then the ones that would be least would be like a, like a delivery van. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, doing a lot of you're doing a lot of idling and that type of stuff. Right. But you're still right. getting still getting above 10 percent. That's right. Yeah. The courier vans that do a lot of stop and go, they just don't run the engine enough to clean it out and have it, you know, running. So uh, th that's on the low end. High end is older engines that run heavy loads. Uh, yeah. You're getting really, really good numbers. Yeah. See, that's 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 really because I just want to make that clear. Like when you say it's not as great for these guys. Not as great as still like, you know, 11%. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Which is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you, Michael, for sharing this article with me. There's a lot of really good points in here. And uh, be sure, everybody, click on Michael's link below. If you want to cut your fuel spend by 10 to 20% net, click that link. We'll help you get underway. And you can save a bunch of money while going greener. That's the name of the game. Amen. Make it happen. Do it today. If you're from HMD, especially, come on, man. We're talking about, you. I'm going to talk about you every time until you guys uh, click on my link. <laughs> Absolutely. It'll all be, it'll all be positive. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll do it for our show today. Thanks for listening or watching everybody and take care. We will see you again soon. Peace and love everybody.